Thank you for inviting me to present our excavations at Sordamnal at this conference. I can only briefly outline the results within a wider context from the late 4th to the mid 3rd millennium BC in 20 minutes, especially since the timeline of Pakistani Balochistan began much earlier. Pioneering archaeological research revealed already in the early 20th century the importance of this region for assessing cultural development and transregional interaction in the Indo-Iranian borderlands and beyond. Crucial for understanding this process is a research carried out by the French archaeological missions during the past 60 years in the Kachi Plain, with Merga, Nosharo and other sites, and in Western Makran with Shahid Tump and Miri Kalat, highlighted here in this image on the screen. It pushed back human settlement to the late 8th, 7th millennium BC Neolithic era and provided information on the further cultural development through the 2nd millennia BC. The 11 meter high Bolan River section visible in this image and finds from the settlement and cemetery at Merga provided insights into cultural processes, climate, economy, social organization and behavior, technologies and long distance procurements. Shifting back and forth during the first three periods, the settlement at Merga revealed the transition from communal to individual storage facilities, indicating social changes. The oldest pottery shown in this image comes from the 5th millennium. From the 4th millennium onwards, the settlement stayed at its place. The cultural sequence revealed a growing complexity and diversity summarized in this screen and visible by pottery, figurines, adornments, and seals. A similar development was observed in other parts of the region where settlement numbers increased significantly during the later fourth millennium. In the Kachi Plain, the cultural sequence continued at Nosharu throughout the third millennium to the Indus period. In far distant Pakistani Makran, likewise, a French mission established a sequence from the Aceramic 5th millennium through the late 3rd millennium in Shahitum at Mirikalat. The tombs and houses of period 2 in Shahitum, shown on the screen, produced the first pottery and personal adornments and revealed the diversification of the food economy of technologies, resources, and an increasing complexity, in particular in the subsequent uh, period 3 dated to the late 4th and early 3rd millennium, attested by spectacular objects, some of which visible here on the screen. At all sites, raw materials, techniques, and in part also styles and burial customs attest long-distance procurements and interaction with Central Asia, Southeastern Iran and Central Baluchistan, notwithstanding cultural differences. The opportunity to explore an area in between these two far distant key zones, namely Central and Southeastern Baluchistan, was taken up by the German-Pakistani mission. Also carried out on a smaller scale, the surveys and excavations conducted from 1996 to 2007 produced a vast amount of data and added substantial information on this region. Apart from Adam Buti, a 5th millennium mound, most sites discovered date from the mid 4th to the early 3rd millennium and are associated with the well-known Togo and or Nile cultural horizons which are widely attested in the borderlands. This also applies to Sor Dam Nal, which uh, was founded around 3500 BC, which you can see in the timetable on the screen. Sor Dam Nal, 
since Hargrave's 1925 excavations, the type site of the widely known Nile pottery was chosen for further investigations since it is one of the few multi-layered mounds. The 3.5 hectare large site has nine meter high deposits divided into three main periods. Period one is founded on natural soil, followed by the Nile period two and a previously unknown settlement of period three. The last period, the Kuli and Kuli Harappan related period four, was only attested by eroded layers and surface finds. Soundings and spatial excavations produced well-preserved architecture and a vast amount of objects. The earliest period one levels, marked in the blue squares on the screen, came to light in a cemetery at the northwestern edge of the mound, to the lower left on the plan, and in soundings in the settlement area to the upper left. The burial chambers were found below stone walls and gravel floors left by Hargraves after his excavation of the period 2 Nile Cemetery. Two of his tombs remained in place marked by the blue squares. The rather small chambers were built with mud bricks often with a small dividing wall and preserved to a height of about 40 cm at best. The particular pottery shown at the bottom of the image were found in between the tombs. They prove the contemporaneity of different Togo styles. All tombs were multiple fractional secondary burials of mixed age and sex. The grave goods are substantial, as you can see on the screen. Tomb 740 was particularly rich, and it is also radiocarbon dated to between 3516 and 3422. Standard offerings in the tombs were Togao, Kilugul Muhammad, and Bikram vessels. Some burials also had stone weights, marine shells with red ochre, and a couple of semi-precious stone beads. These pottery types are also well attested at Merga 3 and 4, but the only parallel for the particular funerary practice is reported from Mundi Gak 1 in present-day Afghanistan. A greater variety of shirts was found in domestic deposits, which are also marked by the use of ochre on floors visible on the screen in the lower left. The portraits illustrate the association of various types, including portraits known from the burials, but also some household wares. They also prove the contemporaneity, con contemporaneity of Togo A, B and C motifs, as was already mentioned above. Noteworthy are highly fired clay bangles with a triangular section in the lower left, similar to the much later Harappan examples. The transition from period 1 to period 2 was not gradual, as is visible in the section on the upper left. Stratigraphic features such as ashy deposits and compact leveling layers serving as foundations for new buildings Profound changes in burial customs and the decorative repertoire indicate a possibly short but very visible difference in between period 1 and the subsequent period 2 null occupation at around 3100 BC. Although recent archaeometric research by Elisa Cortesi indicates a continuity of shaping techniques and raw materials, different vessel shapes Patterns that reveal a new visual world and the appearance of true polychromy with blue and yellow as cold applied pigments reflect major technical and profound aesthetic changes. Typical Nile pottery, as shown on the screen, was found in tombs and domestic contents alike. Yet only a few household vessels were found in tombs. In the late Nile period, the cold applied colors disappear 
but certain patterns, such as PPAL and Omega, visible on the screen here, continue in use for a short time. This late Nile occupation ended around 2700 BC, once again marked in the stratigraphic sequence and by changes in architecture and the material culture. The subsequent period 3 has been exposed on a large area at the left with substantial architecture and with 7 meter high deposits belonging to five occupational phases in trench 1 on the right. No cemetery belonging to this period was discovered. The mud brick walls of the houses were now built on stone foundations with beams. Some rooms were destroyed by fire and preserved with their broken installations since the site was never resettled. The find inventory differs substantially from, from the previous Nile period, as very well visible on the screen. Typical above and red slip pedestal beakers and bowls decorated with stylized pipal, bulls, caprits and geometric patterns such as brackets and applied cordons. Burnished greyware and the use of white paint are exceptional. The most common types with all their different shapes, motifs and qualities are shown in this slide. Like at Trench 1, the well-defined domestic context uncovered in the spatial excavations shown on the screen with fireplaces and kitchen installations reveal the wide variety of associated pottery types. That this pottery was at least partly produced at the site is proven by a kiln and wasters. Other finds include animal and human terracotta figurines and personal ornaments. This occupation is clearly linked to sites, some of which are shown on the screen, such as Dam Sadat, Nosharu, Mundigak and Ranai Gundai in the north, Shahasukte in the west, and for certain types, Miri Kalat and Balakot in the south. An important aspect throughout the sequence of Sordamp is that it was always part of a regional network marked by shared technologies, materials and partly styles. Archaeometric analysis on 125 samples from Sordamp and other sites have produced substantial information on various aspects of pottery production, the procurement of raw materials and aspects of intrasite continuity and change. The investigations included refiring to differentiate paste and determining firing temperatures seen on the upper screen in the image, chemical analysis of paste and pigments by the various methods also visible on the slides, and by petrography. This research helped to define the chemical fingerprint of sawdump, while comparative analysis on pastes and pigments from Sharasorte, Dam Sadat, Balakot and Harappa revealed different recipes to obtain particular colors. This implies a local production and copies or adaptations rather than the movement of objects. At the same time, the procurement of ingredients from partly far distant resources attests a large-scale interaction sphere. These data need to be integrated in more detail with the results from other regions to provide further information on the modes and spheres of this interaction. The last period 4 at Sordamp is mostly attested by surface finds. Although difficult to distinguish from period 3 objects at times, some features mainly details of shapes and decorative elements, link it with the so-called Kuli or Kuli Harappan cultural complex, as shown by the examples on the screen, along with the radiocarbon dates for period 2 to 4, which, like the material culture, support an abandonment of the site around 2500 or 2400.
A similar development is shown by the surveys conducted from Dalavan to Las Bela and across the mountains to Sindh, where substantial sites of this Kuli and Kuli Harappan horizon were documented. In line with earlier fieldwork and the results of the French archaeological missions, a picture emerges that reveals the appearance of script around 2800, illustrated here by the shirt from Mordasang at the lower left, the abandonment of many sites around 2700, the subsequent emergence of the Kuli and then the Kuli Harappan style in a large region on newly founded or existing sites, the continuation of local styles well into the second half of the third millennium, and a strong Harappan presence at a few sites from 2400 onwards. With this scant outlook to the Harappan civilization, I have come to the end of my brief summary of cultural developments in Pakistani, Balochistan and Sordamnal in particular. Thank you very much for your attention.